Hello everyone, and welcome to Darkwood, a top-down survival horror game in the truest sense of survival horror. I'm not just talking about managing inventory or hiding from enemies, I'm talking about actual day-to-day -day survival in a hostile alien environment. One where we'll have to leave all of our preconceived notions of reality at the door in order to survive and look at this world the way a newborn infant looks at reality. Let's try it out. So we have some difficulty settings. Normal, the forgiving mode. When dying, you drop a part of your equipment. All right, so like RuneScape. Hard is the unforgiving mode. You have a limited number of lives and after that, it's game over. Nightmare is the ultimate thrill, which seems to be an Iron Man mode. Oh, normal is as easy as it gets. Okie dokie. Skip prologue, no, of course we will not want to do that. Indiegogo content. This enables additional cool but immersion-breaking content. Now, from what I understand, this game was in early access for quite a long time, so I guess there's things that maybe supporters were able to have put in. We'll turn that off so that we get the pure experience. And let's try it. You are playing a challenging and unforgiving game. You will not be led by the hand. Respect the woods. Be patient. Focus. I see hatred and fear in their eyes. As if I was responsible for the spreading disease. Is this being narrated by Dr. Fauci? As if I were the source of all the misery plaguing this land. have closed us off from the outside world. We are all doomed. Oh, I am playing as Fauci. Huh. Ah, so this actually graphically reminds me a lot of those 90s top-down games. And, as I may have mentioned before, I think that style is perfect for horror games. I got pills, and I've got my old notepad. Okay, so I can- okay, so the note was something different. The pills I can actually place into my inventory by clicking and dragging. Ooh. Oh, I can actually click and drag on physical objects in the world. That's useful, but it has me nervous because it makes it kind of seem like I'm going to have to barricade these doors at some point. And I can see that the visibility is working on Project Zomboid rules. And that I have a cone of vision and I can only see what I'm looking at. The only edible thing growing on this land. I still have some left. So the only edible thing still growing in this environment is potatoes? I mean, it's not the worst thing. Oh no. The generator is almost out of juice. I need to find a full gasoline can. I saw a broken tractor to the east. Maybe I could find some gasoline there. Okay, I can already tell this is going to be the source of some scares. The door actually remains a physical object when I push it open. And it does split my view. Meaning that, say I'm coming through this door this way, and I'm looking to the left, I won't actually be able to see something immediately behind it. My tools. They haven't been sterilized for years. The local patients can't be helped anyway. Now, I know nothing about the backstory of this game. In fact, I believe going in blind is the point. You're supposed to kind of learn the rules of this world. 
But from what I can gather, it seems like something started happening that's similar to... I guess I could compare it to movies like Stalker or Annihilation. Some change occurred not only in the environment, but the people here. As to what that actually entails, I guess we'll have to see. My old Zenit camera. My old useless medical bag. Oh, so we're in like a Robert Neville situation. 1985, so I guess this takes place in the 80s. We're in like a Robert Neville situation where what is that? What is that writhing mass in the other room? Unless that's just supposed to be leaves over the house. I would rather not open it. I spent too much time to lock him in there. There actually is someone in there. I can hear, like, banging and shuffling around inside. This game has such a... I'm sorry, I, I know a lot of people are probably frustrated with me not getting a move on, but I really like to take a moment to get a feel for a game right at the start. And this game is spotting, is already setting up a lot of great things. So right off the bat, it's put me into the role of this doctor who is apparently, or apparently was, trying to cure whatever it is that's taken over this land, but has long since given up on it. And all around this house, you can see the refuse of all the frustrated nights and kind of depressed attempts at half-hearted survival. All the remnants of projects that I started and gave up on. Meanwhile, all I can hear is the sound of the wind blowing through the trees and the cracks in this dilapidated old cabin. Meanwhile, establishing that apparently I've done some pretty unethical things to get myself to this point. But, like I said, you guys are probably really frustrated with me taking this long, so I'm just gonna get a move on and stop speculating and start learning. Locked. And I think I left the key in the wardrobe. Can I sprint? I can, but it's not much of a sprint. And I can see on the top left I have a health bar and a stamina bar. You can select and interact with objects within your reach. The interaction range is indicated by the color changing cursor. And I can switch the lamp on and off. Radio Unitra. The radio has been silent for years. Although, sometimes I think I can hear voices through the static. Yet another nice piece of lore to really help us get inside the head of this character. I know these notes by heart. I don't want to read them now. Man, only a few minutes in and I can already feel just the frustrated desperation and hopelessness of this character. Alright, alcohol... Quickly produced moonshine, barely filtered. And I guess I'm engineering my own coping mechanisms. Rags. Boards. Matchsticks. I guess we can start fires. The key to the front door. And a medical book. Now, does this also open other things? Container examine. The lock is jammed a long time ago. Never mind, I used to keep useless junk in there anyway. Now, what are these round objects littering the ground? Those aren't the potatoes I've been eating. It's like some kind of weird, like, mold or fungus? Alright, now our objective for the moment is he saw a tractor to the east, and we need to go get some fuel for our failing generator. Locked. I think I left the key in the wardrobe. Uh, oh wait, if the cursor has a plus icon next to it, you can hold the left mouse button to open the selected objects. Ah, each thing has a context menu. Use key, unlocked with key. Okay, that's nice and intuitive. What is that? And what is that? I feel like the movie... It's making pupper noises. Is that an injured dog? My dog. 
I don't think he's going to make it. I should end his suffering. In an environment like this, why would you leave your dog chained up outside? Destroyed well, from which I can get some rope. Actually, wait, I wonder, can I shift-click to take it? I can, okay, that does work, nice. Um, okay, how do I do the right thing by my pupper? Man, why would you leave the dog outside? Wooden doll? Oh, it's a, it's a doll. A large humanoid doll with a carved out face. Okay. Can go this way, but... Okay, that does not feel safe. That's... Okay, so as we wander off the path... We don't have a hard, invisible wall. We, we actually have kind of the soft wall of not being able to see where we're going. That stick walking sound is going to scare me so many times through this playthrough. My 125p. It used to be a luxury, but since all the access roads have been devoured by the woods, it became a useless pile of trash. So we're not some rural forest dweller. This actually all sprang up around us. We can press space to vault over obstacles like fences or windows. Yeah, please bear with me. I know this has been very slow so far. But I really do want to take it slow. So I don't get nibbled by whatever horrors are out here. And that's the thing. It's like I said in the intro. I This is almost making me feel, in the way it's described itself up until this point, like a newborn who has to experience the world for the first time. Which, come to think of it, is actually kind of an odd choice, considering we're playing as a character who was... ...presumably... ...studying whatever this is. So that choice is a little bit odd to me, but... ...maybe it'll find some way to make it make sense. Alright, pupper. Alright, boy, gonna try to make it one swing. God, I did not like that sound. Okay. Let's move on. You know, I, I kind of expected the outdoors to be a little bit more hostile, but so far... All I have is... Kind of the calming sound of the wind blowing through the trees. But then again, this is a game all about day-to-day -day survival, and... I've, for the most part, avoided spoilers, but I've heard that the night takes on more of a hostile tone. These trees are growing too fast. Soon I won't be able to cut them down fast enough. So I'm meant to understand that that barrier actually formed overnight. Bear trap examine. I can either pick it up, or actually that's the only thing I can do. Okay, so I'll probably be able to use things like that to defend my house. I can grab a bone from that dead cow. Thank you very much. And if anything, the silence is just putting me more on edge. Ah, so I do have a map that is expanding as I progress. And the wind has taken on a more sinister sound. What was once a cool breeze now sounds more like howls and what sounds like may just be something vocal. Okay, you told me to check the map, but it's the same map as before. The woods have devoured all the roads that connected us to the outside world. No one is able to pass through this thicket. <laughs> I definitely do feel a certain anxiety about progressing farther. And you know, they kind of have done what I said and brought it back around to this feeling like unfamiliar territory, even with a character that is presumably supposed to be familiar with all this. 
The fact is, the Sporus changes so much overnight that he can't be familiar with it. It's almost like even the expert on this situation is experiencing this day by day. Location found, fallen tree. Now let's see how what this does to the map. Okay, so it does add waypoints to the map that I can identify. An old campfire. To immediately transfer items, hold left control or left shift to click on it way ahead of you. Oh. These parts of the woods are dark. I should craft a torch. Yeah, now I really like this idea. It's got all these soft barriers to the map that essentially represent me going off the path into the densest and darkest parts of the forest. In that way, it limits the map size without actually forcing me to turn back at any point, and doing that is a much more immersive thing than just invisible walls. Okay, how do we craft? We can craft... Hmm, a red torch and a white torch. Well, I don't have the gas needed for a red torch, so I guess we'll go with a regular white one. Uh, now before I continue any farther... How does one save? Hmm, that's worrying. We don't save through the menu. We are going to want to be very careful. And I can't hold a torch... And, a, and an axe at the same time. But it does look like I can potentially swing with the torch. I doubt it will do as much damage. You know, I was skeptical of the top-down perspective, but this game really makes the most of it and puts some really unique twists on it. I love these branches hanging overhead that actually do a pretty good job of simulating being unable to see through the dense foliage at ground level. Location found. Abandoned house. Can this be called a house? I mean, there's what I recognize as walls over here, but that's about it. Is there any way I can actually make my way inside? No, I can't see any... Is this a door? No. A window barricade. Now, from what I understand, this game is on a day-night cycle. So if I can barricade just random ruins in the woods, I wonder if that means that there will be times when I get caught outside at night and have to make the most of the position that I'm in. That's a body. I don't think that's going to be just another wooden doll. And look over there! That's a deer, but those look like human feet. What am I getting myself into? Corpse. In a few days, it will be completely absorbed. So whatever's going on here... I guess it absorbs the biomass of living organisms to create whatever this is? Or maybe I'm wasting my time trying to come up with a scientific explanation. It seems like this guy, this doctor, never got any closer, so why should I? Get some more rags. I'm actually getting very full on inventory space. It's not even giving me the opportunity to examine this. It's just going to make me look at it and speculate for myself. Wardrobe, more rags. What do I use these rags for? I think they're used for... I think they're used for the torches, like you wrap them around the end of a branch. Wait a minute, that one looks like a smaller dog or something, but the lower half clearly turns into a human. Yeah, this whole thing is giving me really strong... 
At first I said Stalker, but it, it's really bringing very strong Annihilation vibes. Mainly due to the effect it's having on actual biological organisms, because in Stalker, we never actually saw any organisms within the zone, besides the plant life. Or I think there were birds, but they were largely normal. A man in need. How much do I trust this? Oh, and I just realized the grass actually sways underneath you. In the modern day, there's so much you can do with faux retro graphics. Things that stand out so much. There's actually a lot of ways to put a modern spin on it. I think this one is still breathing. I don't trust this. A big metal key. If there is an exit out of these woods, this key will surely open it? That seems like a pretty big conclusion to jump through. 21. He's unconscious. I've never seen him around here before. He's only carrying a key. And some journal. Grunkle Stan? Since he managed to sneak in here, he must know how to get out. Of course, he won't help me voluntarily. But that... is of no importance. I like this cutscene. My character's making some huge assumptions here, but... They're assumptions someone could make in his position. Show me how, and I'll let you go. Sometimes I hear her voice. Oh no, I just finished playing the Underhell House. She's calling me. Calling me to return home. I think he also said he heard voices on the radio. Where's the exit? Where? Show me where. Wow, it's almost like the guy in the chair is the protagonist, and I'm the first person he encounters in the horror game. <laughs> Way to go. I'll kill you like a dog if I have to. Well, he's not much good to you if you do that. He stole my key. Oh, I'm... I'm playing as the prince. God, I might have been more on point than I thought. An entry to a small cellar. Maybe the pantry? Oh, what an interesting perspective switch. Clothes, rag, I'm hurt. I could use these rags to craft some bandages and heal myself. Wow, I'm constantly reminded of Project Zomboid. All right, let's craft some bandages. And I can craft a lockpick out of these wires. Okay, well, we know how we're getting out of here. Uh, how do I use the bandages? I have to hold right-click and use bandages. Wait. Am I the one locked in the... No, I don't think so. I think the door that was locked, the one where he said it was too much work to get him in there, I think that's the room immediately adjacent to me. So I've got potentially two threats to worry about on my way out. The barricaded door is too strong to dismantle. Okay, well, let me use the... Let me use that lockpick that I crafted, then. Hmm. 
Maybe I can use it on the cellar? Locked. I could open it with a lockpick. Yes. From which I get a shovel and a flashlight. A shovel and a flashlight? That's just junk that you don't need anyway, huh, Doctor? Those all seem like incredibly useful things worth their weight in gold in this environment, especially several years in. But, you know, once more, I'm in the role of someone who... I really feel like I could benefit from knowing more about their backstory. Okay, now I could use the shovel... Maybe to bash down the door? No. Oh, maybe. Maybe I just had to be closer. The item is no longer usable. I need to repair it. I've broken my shovel. It's like Minecraft all over again. No. No, 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 no. Or maybe not no. Insider information, we do know that the generator was about to run out of fuel, and we never did get to that tractor. A syringe? Perhaps I can use it as a weapon? No. I seem to have a second inventory where useful notes and maps and things go. One that's separate from my main inventory that has limited space. Oh, I can't see anything. Ah, oh, so cool how they've managed to implement the functionality of something like a flashlight into this top-down view. A really incredible atmosphere that this game has managed to put together from very limited elements. It's managing to do all of this entirely through its limited perspective view and its sound design. eerily disjointed music and the sounds of the creaks and groans of the cabin. My limited view requiring me to look around at all times and the ever-present sound of the wind howling through the trees. It's, it's so perfect in its atmosphere. And as soon as I touch the radio, it stops. Was it all bloody before? It's like a bloodied hand touched the button. And when I put it down, it starts playing again. Anything useful in the- What? 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 See, this is the thing about having truly no idea what to expect. Knowing that this is supposed to be a really unforgiving game, but not knowing what the dangers are or where they're going to be coming from, what should I be worried about? Nothing in the cages. I feel like I'm missing something critical. Okay, there's a combo lock on that. Who's there? Please let me out. That is so creepy in a top-down view. Now you might see this as a limited way of presenting a game, but by depriving us of certain senses, we're forced to use our imagination in other areas. What does that voice sound like? We only have the text coming from a darkened room. Okay, I'm a little confused as to what I'm supposed to be doing now. Alright, I restarted because I spent literally like 10 minutes trying to figure out what it is I'm supposed to be doing here. Syringe. Ah, oh, are you kidding? It took me so long to find this. That is ridiculously... That is so based on luck. Alright, I can switch the generator on. Well, probably not. I probably have to find some gas. Uh, Mr. Doctor Man, did you ever finish your trip to the tractor? 
That sounded like footsteps. All right, uh, gas and a table leg. I can use it as a weapon, which I will do. Because that doctor could be back at any second, and I need to be prepared. Uh, so if we hold down left click... Okay, this inventory is a little bit awkward, but I think I can get the hang of it. There we go. Man, why am I pouring all this in? I only intend to stay here for as little time as possible. Maybe I should have kept some. In any case, that's the generator on, meaning we no longer need the flashlight. And we do probably need the table leg. Oh! Can you be trusted to stay right there? Please, can you be trusted to stay right there? Corpse. That's no corpse. Corpses don't move like that. The corpse has two dials instead of eyes. His mouth is wide open, and I can hear a distorted voice, barely distinguishable from the radio sta static that looked like it was sitting up. Am I... Am I meant to understand that... That thing is what the radio turned into? Not just corpses being turned into objects, but objects being turned into corpses. Okay, yes, yeah, so that's the description. Here's speed 4892. I bet that's the door code, 4892. That is truly unnerving. We can't even trust a room to stay the way it is, even when we turn our backs. 4892. Now let's be at the ready. The door seems stuck. I need to apply some force on it. Well, let's not waste all our durability on the door. We have to be ready to fight whatever's in there. Okay. Oh, look at that. The way it... It actually has... Limited my cone of view. So that there's a dark corner that I can't see into. Only knowing from the... From the location of the text box that sound is coming from that direction. A muffled voice coming from the darkness that we can be sure is not as helpless as it seems. I don't like how I can't actually see any better the closer I get. Ah! Ow! Die. Die! Oh no. Oh no. Ow! Uh, how am I going to get the timing right? I can't... It's so hard to see. It's so hard to see and judge the distance. Please don't kill me. Oh wow, your head is truly opened up. Plastic chick. Have I just completely brainsed out a mental patient? Am I laughing at what I just did? How do you want to get out now? No! What do you think you can manage all by yourself? That's not a voice coming from me. That's a voice I'm hearing from vaguely the middle of the room. Or maybe... No, 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 no! Maybe I can pull the wardrobe back to block the door. No. No, those windows are being broken in. Run. Uh, get get to an interior room. An interior room. I can see that wardrobe being thrown around. No! What a start. 
what a start. getting out of here? Have I been helped by some strange thing or person? I must have been because this is not the same cabin that I just left. A pleasant warmth is emanating from the oven. I can sense a strange yet familiar scent. It's the smell of the protective substance, which gives me relative safety after dark. The vapors rising from the huge cauldron are distributed all over the house via long pipes. As long as I remain inside my hideout, I have a chance of surviving the night. So I guess I'm dependent on the steam rising off of this thing. Kind of like how, when I'm sick, I'm dependent off of the vapors rising off of a humidifier. I can examine the oven or look at the weird bottle. When I arrived here a couple days ago, the oven was basically prepared. I just needed to light it to ensure my safety at night. The cottage must have been one of our hideouts. The inhabitants of these woods don't need to inhale this revolting gas. The label on the bottle says, Staying out of reach of the protective substance after the nightfall results in immediate death in 99 out of 100 cases. It is advised to evenly spread the gas inside the sleeping area. So whatever this substance is, it wards off whatever creatures live in these woods. Warning. Even a properly prepared substance does not guarantee 100% safety. Remain vigilant. It's recommended to stay in well-lit indoor areas in order to minimize the risk. So I'm dependent not only on this substance, but on light as well. I'll have to keep generators going and... I guess have to hunker down for the night. That is so good, because... Oh, I am so happy to see this represented in a video game because I have always felt that a big part of the creepy and comfy feeling is danger, but an insulation from that danger. And in that way, I'm safe only if I can maintain both these ovens and the light. And in that way, I get a safety bubble, but a safety bubble which I have to work to maintain and which can fail me at any time. I'm so interested to see how this mechanic plays out. Look inside the pot. A small, empty cast iron pot. I haven't used it yet. I haven't felt any hunger or thirst since the accident a few days ago. You haven't felt any hunger or thirst since the accident a few days ago. Maybe I'm just coming off of Resident Evil, but am I a product of this environment already? I can't stop thinking about one thing. These mushrooms. These red, pulsating mushrooms. They look so... tasty. Maybe this pot will prove useful after all. Cook. So I guess this pot kind of... Functions as a crafting station as well. Essence. That must be the syringe that I got from the doctor's house. So dose one, efficiency one. But what is essence? So I have to go out and I guess grab some of those red mushrooms. The lamp won't switch on so I must not have any power. And a wardrobe, which I can search to grab some stuff. Nails. Photo of a road. 
the road home. Yesterday I barricaded one of the windows. If I want to stay here for some time, I should do the same with the other windows. Now I can do that probably by boarding the windows, but also maybe by dragging this wardrobe into the... Oh! I think that's exactly what I'm supposed to do. There's a hole in the wall here. I bet I can drag this wardrobe and use it to block that hole. Oh, that is such a cool mechanic. And we've got our own little shed in the back. Complete with another one of those corpses that seems to be the opposite of the ones we encountered before. I see a human torso on top, but three legs on the bottom. In fact, one of the legs seems like it's growing out of the arm. Oh no. I just heard a dog barking, and... While it's established that things are more dangerous at night, I'm going to go ahead and assume that I'm not entirely safe during the day, either. The new generator is half empty. It contains enough gasoline for one more night. I should find a full can in the house above the underground entrance. Underground entrance, so that's to the south of me. So if I want to find another can, I'll have to head down there. But it seems like I still have time to worry about that yet. I can switch on the generator, which I will not do now. I guess I'll do that just before nightfall. I'll have to take care to manage my resources wisely, especially as I come to grips with the way these mechanics work. Now I'm going to be looking at this Let's Play from a slightly different perspective. Well, before I would get really annoyed if I died, even the opening titles of this game reminds you to be patient. I have a table saw here. I can convert wood to logs using 25 fuel. As well as a well, which I can repair using planks. I'm going to try to have an outlook on this that is more trial and error based. And I hope that this game will kind of allow me the opportunity to do that. Because remember, these are mechanics that I have to learn from scratch. I have no frame of reference for literally any of this. So I'll have to be learning very much as I go. Let's drag this and push it in front of the door. And I'll have to stand somewhere else to make sure that it covers the gap and that fits nicely. The only problem is, if something were trying to come in, would it maybe be able to push this outward? It might make more sense to turn it to the side, push the whole thing out of the house, and then wedge it in the gap so that pushing it inward only serves to stop it farther. But anyway, I think the most important thing for me to do right now is going to find out what this substance I need to produce is. Let's grab these red mushrooms, and that leaves behind mushroom remains. So hopefully it'll grow back in those spaces. Now let's look in here, and we see that we can add the odd-looking mushroom from which I can extract 10 essence. And we get a dose at 50 essence. So for every five times I harvest these mushrooms, I'll get to get another dose of essence? But what does the essence do for me? That's the question. More mushrooms growing right here. I can still hear that dog, but it's coming from a different direction now. I don't know if those are just environmental sounds or if it's something that I actually have to worry about. Now with nothing else to do here, I kind of want to head south to try and pick up some of those gas cans. The question is, I don't know how this day-night cycle works. Is it something that's going to approach relatively quickly and require me to hunker down? Or do I still have time to go over there? And more importantly, how do I know? There's that dog. Hello? I assume I want to stay away from you. Yeah, okay, so encountering, I presume that's an enemy. 
doesn't always mean combat. And I've just realized that if I move my cursor, I can actually see somewhat within the trees. That'll be useful. Okay, so if I look at the map, I just have to keep heading south. Where I can grab alcohol and wire, which I can use for... Oh, no. Nope, 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 nope. I have no way of dealing with you right now. And if I press control, I actually take a leap back. That's probably going to be very useful in combat. Now, how do I go about reaching this house? This underground entrance. There's a bear trap. I'm sure I can use that to protect my house at night. No, dog, dog, dog. I wonder if these animals actually have territory which I can intrude on. What is this? Like some kind of writhing mask that I can't even see myself within. Locked. I could open it with a lockpick, then that is what I shall do. Oh, I don't have enough wire. It told me that I could get it from the house above the underground entrance. Or maybe that is my house. Maybe I just have to search my own house more thoroughly. Or perhaps it's this one right here. Well, I can get a nail and a board. I can use that for repairing or barricading my own house. I only briefly mentioned it, but I actually really like the encounters we had with those dogs. Being able to back away and having enemies that don't just exist in an attack on sight state actually helps to give the impression of a living, breathing environment. It makes the inhabitants of that environment actually feel like things that are trying to survive, and not just enemies that have been placed there for my entertainment. This is the house I'll find the entrance to the underground here. I thought that mass over to my right was the underground entrance. Ah, oh, that almost got me. Although I don't really... What is that sound? I don't really know how the door managed to pass over that bear trap. Alright, let's collect another one of these. I'm sure they'll come in handy. Ah, it's the sound of mushrooms. What just happened to me? Wait, I'm losing health, and there's a skull in my top left. Are these mushrooms, like, poisonous? I don't think I got them either. No, so I can't touch them. I have to be... Okay, so there's something I don't want to step in. I have to get close and harvest them. To cycle between currently selected objects, press E. So rag, rag, nail, and another lockpick. Oh, <laughs> This is like that scene in Jumanji where, uh, where he has to go into the shed to get the axe, and he picks up an axe on the ground to chop off the lock to the shed to get the axe. Gasoline. Pack of cigarettes. They don't really look like they're still smokable. And more matches. Now, it looks like there's something more beyond here. And that I can drag this wardrobe out of the way to get to it. But the question is, do I want that? It seems to me that this character already knows about this entrance to the underground. And would have taken steps to protect it by placing that there. The entrance to the underground tunnels. Is this something that I wanted to do? I did not mean to go down there. I was looking for some kind of examine. Okay, I'm going to leave here for now because I am not at all ready to find out what this is about. But is this maybe something I need to keep secret? Maybe I should drag this back over. Come on. Let's 
leave you here. So I got the gasoline. Now the next order of business is going to be to head back to that crate we found over by the... whatever that writhing mass was. And see what's inside. I actually don't have a ton of inventory space left. What are you? That's quite a cool rack you got on your head. Are you going to be friendly? I'd really like it if you were friendly. You don't seem like you're going to be friendly. <laughs> nope! Nope, not friendly, not friendly, not friendly, not friendly, not friendly! Are you still on me? Yes. I don't remember where exactly I saw that crate. Mm, but it's one of these. It's one of these where I don't actually get to see exactly where I place on the map. In fact, I have to, uh, I have to use reference points, landmarks, to determine my location. Oh. Nope, okay. It's more of those masses. I thought I was heading in the right direction, but it seems like that's maybe not the case. It seems like these things are actually all over the place. I think my house should be over here somewhere? No, it's just a big clearing. Oh god, I... Being that I can't see myself on the map, I hope I don't get lost. That would be really bad for me. I guess follow the tire tracks? Corpse, he's got consumable pills and wire, which I can use to craft another lockpick. But I'm not going to do that right now. No, I don't think I came down this far. I think I'm going the wrong way. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. No. This is not good. And what if I get caught outside before dark? I don't want to end up doing that away from the protective substance. Oh, wait. Is this where I was before? Maybe my house is up this way. No? No. Oh no, I really, I really don't like how lost I'm getting. This isn't good. I really need to construct a mental map of this area in a hurry. There's a bear trap right there, so I certainly haven't been here before. Oh no, I am just hopelessly lost. Dog, 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 nope. Nope, no, 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 no. Oh no, the sun's going down! I don't know where to go! Location found, burned houses. Okay, so up and to the left. Maybe I was on the right track. Consumables? Okay, no, I need to just head up and to the left with a quickness. As quick as can be. In fact, I'm starting to think these tire tracks really do lead back to my house. I need to move, 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 move. It's getting dark in a very big hurry. Shrine. Okay, that's immediately to the left of my house. Or to the right. The house is to the left. I need to... I'm not sure. Should I fill up the generator first? Okay. We can relax a little bit now. I still don't have a weapon. And let's dump all this gas we've got into the generator. All we've got. Now remember, lights help. And the protective substance helps. But it doesn't guarantee our safety. Now, we did collect a good number of boards and nails while we were out there, so perhaps we can use those to barricade the windows. I'm starting to hear some very unnerving sounds. You need three. I don't have enough. Uh, everything feels like it's going to cost so many resources. 
Do I maybe have a box that I can put things in? Alright. Now we can put some of these in here. Alright, and that brings us to 30 out of 50 essence. Okay, so I think what we're going to want to do is do this Project Zomboid style. The bear trap under the window is still open. Looks like this night was exceptionally uneventful. Okay, I think I'm going to place bear traps... Oh no, I... I don't have bear traps, I only have scrap metal. I was gonna say, maybe we should do this Zomboid style where we start off surviving from a single defensible room, and then you work your way out until eventually you can you have the resources to secure the whole place. So obviously we're gonna need bear traps in front of each of these windows, in lieu of any barricading, and preferably one on the other side of this door as well. Or maybe I can sleep through the night. No, it's not letting me do that either. Night protection. You're in the hideout under the influence of the protective substance. It will help you survive the night. Well, that's good, I guess. I have no weapons, so... Unless I can use a board as a weapon. No, I cannot. That's not good. I am completely defenseless. Yeah, but I guess that just plays into how this whole thing works. I'm a little lost lamb amongst wolves. Maybe if I take this stool and drag it in front of the door, maybe then I'll be safe. Yep. Totally safe in here. Nothing can harm me now. People who know this game, I'm sure, are yelling at me so much right now. But I don't know the ins and outs. I don't know what I should be doing, what precautions I should be taking, what precautions I even can take. Or what that is. Poisonous mushrooms. Should I harvest? <gasps> no. Don't think I don't notice those ambient sounds rising to what will undoubtedly be a terrifying crescendo. I do appreciate, though, that this is willing to have some more subtle scares. This reminds me of when you're home alone and you've just read an exceptionally good creepypasta. Is something inside? Should I not be walking? Should I not be making noise? Huddle by the protective substance. This reminds me of when you've when you're home alone and you've just read an exceptionally good creepypasta. And now all you're left with is silence, so you just kind of huddle yourself in a corner. Afraid of every creak and groan of the house. That's a feeling I really miss, and it's the kind of thing that I so desperately seek when it comes to horror media. And I'm so glad that this is actually scratching that itch. This is scratching the itch of being home alone on a rainy Friday night. I love it. But please tell me there's something I can do with this bed. Why can't I use the bed? Why is it even... It appears to be an interactable object. Let me use it. Uh, I see those mushrooms have grown back. Not only do they grow back, I guess, in places where I've harvested them, they'll also grow in just any odd place. So we've never truly searched an environment. What's the music doing? What's the music doing? What is 
the music doing? I'm sure that ominous red glow means nothing but good things for me. Oh, it actually does mean good things for me. I survived the first night at Freddy's. Thanks for nothing, Bed. I thought I could use you for some protection from monsters like Minecraft, but you were no such help. And a new tab has been added, Time Freeze. Ah! Oh, there's a person here! Wolfman! Ah! I was so busy looking at the top left corner of the screen, I didn't even notice that you weren't part of the... part of the map. Hey, you're cool looking. You look like the image of that wolfman peering in through the window on the door. Even from afar, I can smell your putrid stench. Be glad I don't have an appetite for carcasses, meat. The figure hides its face under the hood. It smells of wet soil and fur. Wow, the flavor text in this game is just... dripping with word choices and... just a voice that really sells the atmosphere, that really feels like it complements the world that's been built here. I know what you're after. I can help you reclaim what you've lost. If you help me attend to a certain matter. What do you say, comrade? He says with that AK slung over his shoulder. I believe this game takes place in rural Poland. Or at least what used to be rural Poland. I guess from the point of view of these characters, it remains to be seen whether this event is localized. As he leans towards me, I can hear him giggling under the hood. This no voice acting style really leaves a lot to the imagination. Can you imagine what a giggle would sound like coming from this guy? I knew it would interest you. Before we make a deal, you need to prove that you can do the job. I have no time for weaklings, meat. You follow? Show me what you're made of. Get through to the silent forest. You think it's so easy? If I were you, I would prepare myself well before setting out. When you get there, you'll find me in this spot. Remember it. The wolf grabs my map and scribbles something on it. The likes of you always crawl back to me. Ah, I guess you act as the merchant. I wouldn't recommend wandering around these woods at night. It would mean certain death for you, meat. Better hide in that hideout of yours before dark. And pray for the morning light. Yeah, that's what I've been doing. Oh, and I can show him items, maybe to gain additional context. That's cool. Plastic chick. Beautiful item. Perfect for a church fair. What's that you got there? The wolf snatches the photograph from my hand and studies it carefully. Finally, he snorts, his thick yellow spit landing on the photo. Ha <laughs> ha! This road doesn't exist anymore, overgrown with trees like all the other ones. Well, that's quite ominous when you consider that the photo was labeled the road home. The wolf throws the photo to the ground. Better forget about the road home, meat. Around here, all roads lead to nowhere. Wow, this... This really does bring about this atmosphere that gets you into the mindset of forget about going home, forget about your old reality. It actually seems like a fool's errand to even consider leaving as a goal to set. You've got to learn to adapt to this world to become an inhabitant just as much as the Wolfman. I can trade as well. Uh, let's get an idea for the prices. So value 200, well things like this are valued only at 15. 
Although the odd-looking mushrooms do sell for a little bit more. I buy weapons and ammo, so I guess there will maybe be different merchants who have different ideas of what's worth something. Oh, and I can gain reputation with them. So we've got full RPG things going on here. I also like the idea that this place has been overtaken for so long that even the most valuable objects are really just the most valuable scrap. It's all makeshift devices and handcrafted items. And of course, the almighty gasoline. Value 66. Can I even afford it? I honestly don't think I can. If you wish to spend some more quality time basking in the striking yet natural beauty of my features before you head off to the silent forest, you will find me in my camp in the dry meadow. The wolf points to a location on my map. Okay, dokers. Now it seems we're still affected by this time freeze. And actually, now that I think about it, how did the wolfman get in with all the doors barricaded? I hope I didn't waste too much time talking to the wolfman. We should probably turn the generator off during the day to save on fuel. I could have sworn I had seen some mushrooms growing through the window last night. Unless, maybe that was some kind of hallucination? Meant to tempt me into stepping outside? Okay, according to Google, interacting with a character or the stove causes it to autosave. We can put that in there, bringing us to 50 out of 50 essence, which allows me to upgrade. I can see farther with the eagle eye. With Moth, once a day I'll be able to heal myself by standing next to an electric light source. Navigator, once a day I'll be able to learn my current location on the map. And Mushroom Healing, I'll be able to heal myself by eating mushrooms. Tell you what, since await oh shadows, staying in dark areas at night can be dangerous to me. That one's in red, so does that indicate that it's a bad thing that can be... I don't even know what that means. You know what, I, th I think I'm gonna go ahead and take Navigator. Maybe it's short-sighted to me, and I'm sure veteran players are going to be yelling at me, but I feel like I've already been in that situation once, and I think it'll be really useful for me to use this those times when night is about to fall, and I don't know where my home is. So I'm going to take Navigator. I need to choose a negative perk. Staying in dark areas at night can be dangerous to me. Wait, I needed to choose... I'm confused by the way that worked. Unless there's, like, some kind of different thing I can craft? Press Q to access the active skill menu. Oh. I see, so I did select Navigator. It's just that I needed to choose a negative perk to go alongside it, so everything has a drawback. This game is just dripping with atmosphere, and so immersive, I love how it's taking advantage of the top-down view, and utilizing it in such a way where it doesn't feel like a limitation, but actually a real artistic choice to get you to engage with this world. A world which I can't wait to learn more about. If you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any other videos you'd like me to do, the best place to suggest those is at the Discord at the link in the description. There we have our great community who loves to talk about all things creepy and comfy. And as always, I will see you in the next one.